Ethan Hawke American actor and writer Ethan Green Hawke is an American actor, author, and film director. He made his film debut in Explorers, before making a breakthrough performance in Dead Poets Society. Hawke starred alongside Julie Delpy in Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy, from 1995 to 2013. Born, 1970, age 54 years, Austin, Texas. Spouse, Ryan Hawk, M. 2008, Uma Thurman, M. 1998 to 2005. Children, Maya Hawk, Levon Hawk, Clementine Jane Hawk. Upcoming movies, The Black Phone 2, Blue Moon. Height, 5 foot 10. Ethan Green Hawk was born on November 6, 1970 in Austin, Texas, to Leslie Carroll, Green, a charity worker, and James Stephen Hawk, an insurance actuary. His parents were students at the University of Texas at the time, but divorced when Ethan was five years old. His mother raised him alone for the next five years, moving around the country, until she remarried in 1981 and the family settled in Princeton Junction, New Jersey. He attended West Windsor Plainsboro High School and then transferred to the Hun School of Princeton, and it was while he was there that he began taking acting classes at the McCarter Theater on the Princeton campus. His early ambition had been to be a writer, but as a result of the acting lessons and appearances in student productions, he persuaded his mother to allow him to attend an audition for a role in a sci-fi adolescent adventure, Explorers, 1985. He got the role, along with River Phoenix, but although the movie was favorably reviewed, it met with little commercial success which discouraged Hawk from pursuing further movie roles for several years. He was admitted to the prestigious Carnegie Mellon University to study theater, but his studies were interrupted when he won his breakthrough role opposite Robin Williams in Dead Poets Society, 1989, and he did not complete his degree. He then appeared in numerous films before taking a role in the Generation X drama Reality Bites, 1994 for which he received critical praise. He starred in the romantic drama Before Sunrise, 1995, and its later sequels Before Sunset, 2004, and Before Midnight, 2013. His subsequent acting career was a mix of theater work, earning a number of awards and nominations, including a Tony Award nomination for his role in The Coast of Utopia at the Lincoln Center in New York, and a mix of serious and more commercial movies, notably Gattaca, 1997, where he met his first wife, Uma Thurman, and Training Day, 2001. His role as the father in the coming-of-age drama Boyhood, 2014, earned him multiple award nominations, including the Academy, BAFTA, Golden Globe, and SAG Award for Best Supporting Actor. Meanwhile, he also wrote two novels, The Hottest State, 1996, and Ash Wednesday, 2002. Family Spouses Ryan Hawk, June 21, 2008 Present, Two Children Uma Thurman, May 1, 1998 to July 20, 2004, Divorced, Two Children Children Clementine Hawk Indiana Hawk Maya Hawk Levon Hawk Parents Leslie Hawk James Stephen Hawk Trademarks in later roles, meek and mild manner demeanor. In 1990s roles, a prototypical Gen X rebel slash outsider. Often sports a goatee in his films. Frequently collaborating with Richard Linklater. Frequent works with Laura Linney. Trivia says that he is constantly mistaken for Mark McGrath from the band Sugar Ray so often that he signs autographs as Mark McGrath and, apparently, the same thing happens to Mark McGrath who, in turn, signs autographs as Ethan Hawke to fans. His cat appeared in Lisa Loeb's music video, Stay, I Missed You, which he directed. Became a father for the first time at age 27 when his wife Uma Thurman gave birth to their daughter Maya Ray Hawk, a.k.a. Maya Hawk, on July 8, 1998. First cousin twice removed of Tennessee Williams. Hawk's great-grandfather and Williams' father were brothers. Became a father for the second time at age 31 when his wife Uma Thurman gave birth to their son Levon Green Hawk, a.k.a. Levon Hawk, on January 15, 2002. His parents were University of Texas students when Ethan was born, 
and they separated when he was three. Remains close friends with Dead Poets Society, 1989, co-stars, Robert Sean Leonard and Josh Charles. Because of that movie's theme, Triumph of the Human Spirit, Hawk laughingly refers to it as one flew over the robin's nest, due in part to Robin Williams's starring role. Proposed to ex-wife Uma Thurman twice before she said yes, childhood friends with director Brian Singer, The Usual Suspects, 1995, X-Men, 2000. In Before Sunset, 2004, which he co-wrote with Julie Delpy and Richard Linklater, Hawk's character Jesse is in a failing marriage with a woman he married because she had become pregnant. Soon after the film's release, Hawk divorced his real-life wife Uma Thurman, whom he had married while she was pregnant with their first child. Twice during his twenties, he took a two-year leave of absence, once to attend NYU and study English, he dropped out when a role came up, and then to write a novel, was accepted by Carnegie Mellon University, School of Drama in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania but dropped out after only five months. Took a year off acting after Training Day, 2001, to complete his novel Ash Wednesday. Five Easy Pieces, 1970, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, and Reds, 1981, are among his favorite films. Met and became friends with River Phoenix during the making of Explorers, 1985. Is a huge fan of the Star Wars movie series. He was the original choice to play FBI agent Will Graham in Red Dragon, 2002, but turned the role down to take time off from making movies. Co-founded the now-defunct theater company called Malapart with Robert Sean Leonard, Frank Whaley, and Steve Zahn. Became a father for the third time at age 37 when his wife Ryan Hawk gave birth to their daughter Clementine Hawk on July 18, 2008. He was inducted into the Texas Film Hall of Fame in Austin, Texas. Published his first novel, The Hottest State, 1996. The novel sold for $400,000 to Little, Brown and Company. A decade later, wrote and directed a film adaptation, The Hottest State, 2006. Became a father for the fourth time at age 40, when his wife Ryan Hawk gave birth to their daughter Indiana Hawk on July 23, 2011 has appeared in eight films directed by Richard Linklater, Before Sunrise, 1995, The Newton Boys, 1998, Waking Life, 2001, Tape, 2001, Before Sunset, 2004, Fast Food Nation, 2006, Before Midnight, 2013, and Boyhood, 2014. He has English, as well as Scottish, Scots-Irish-slash-Northern Irish, and Cornish, ancestry. When he was in the seventh grade, he played Lon in West Windsor Plainsboro Junior High School production of the play Meet Me in St. Louis, has appeared in three films that have been Oscar-nominated for Best Picture, Dead Poets Society, 1989, Quiz Show, 1994, and Boyhood, 2014. He played Sam Shepard's son in both Snow Falling on Cedars, 1999, and Hamlet, 2000. Very good friends with Catalina Sandino Moreno and Julie Delpy. Turned down the role of Bobby Mercer in Four Brothers, 2005. He loved the script but could not commit to this because of scheduling conflicts. The role eventually went to Mark Wahlberg. He was considered for the role of Gordy Lachance in Rob Reiner's Stand By Me, 1986, which went to Will Wheaton, was in a production of Great Expectations at West Windsor Plainsboro High School. His mother is a strict vegetarian and animal rights activist. He was offered the role of Bruce Wayne slash Batman in Batman Forever, 1995, but turned it down as he didn't want to be typecast in the role. He later admitted to regretting turning it down due to the valuable career opportunities it could have led to. Quotes I think most people are good at more things than the world gives them the opportunity to do. The kindest compliments I have ever heard are when cops tell me Training Day, 2001, and Assault on Precinct 13, 2005, inspired them to become cops. The funniest compliments I have ever heard are when people tell me that I love your band Sugar Ray. But the truth is, I've never wanted to be a movie star and I've been pretty clear about that. People look at your life and see things as a big deal that aren't a big deal to you. What I mean is, the chapter breaks are different for me. I'll read about my divorce, and what people think about it, and, well, it's so inaccurate, usually, but the fact is, 
I wouldn't want it to be accurate. Because it's my truth. When I was younger, it was more important to me to come off well. Now, I just want to try to be good at what I do. The devil is seductive, and so guns are glorious in the culture. I understand there's a case to be made. For instance, Spike Lee said something like this, that you can't have a scene with drugs in a film that doesn't secretly make you want to do drugs. In the same vein, it's hard to make a movie that's anti-violence, because the very nature of photographing violence eroticizes it. But I'm not so sold that that's true. Actors write movies all the time, but you try fiction, and you're an asshole. Everyone wants to try new things, or almost everyone. Really great supporting actors want to play the lead, and lead actors secretly wish they could be character actors. Brad Pitt doesn't want to be pretty. You know what I mean? Everybody in the world wants to look like Brad Pitt, and Brad Pitt wants to look like a regular guy. A lot of these movies, they're really enjoyable to see. Really, it's like smoking crack or something you walk out and you feel diminished by it. It's eye candy, just violence and sex. Definitely lots of sex, people making out or showing their tits, which is always fun, but it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. I tried it, I tried doing this Angelina Jolie movie, Taking Lives, 2004, a popcorn movie, the first movie I did that's about nothing. And I didn't like it, because I do ultimately feel there's enough crap like this. It's so much more fun and harder and more challenging to try to make something that's entertaining, but isn't wasting your time. One of the things that's great about Training Day, 2001, is that you have two very distinct personalities, but it's true, it also has a great plot. If you can do both, it's incredibly exciting for the audience. Oftentimes, you have art films that have no narrative to speak of and instead offer characterization, then you have mainstream movies that are simple formulas, ABCD Training Day, 2001, is a good combo. On being a father, it's the greatest pleasure in my life. It's the only role that, if I fail, I will consider my life a failure. A lot of American actors when they do Shakespeare, put on a phony English accent and it drives me crazy. You're always fighting against the idea that only the British know how to do Shakespeare. After Reality Bites, 1994, came out, I had opportunities to be a different kind of actor, and rightly or wrongly, I grew up in a household where there was such anger and resentment towards anyone who had any money, that I never really had any desire to make any money. And I had the idea that a real artist wouldn't have any money. That's been problematic. Acting was something that came very easily to me. It fell in my lap. But the people I admired the most were not really movie stars. I was full of Jack London and Jack Kerouac. On working with Jude Law, I think Jude's the real thing. He is just electric, man. He is so beautiful. Salaries. Daybreakers, 2010, for $1 million. Assault on Precinct 13, 2005, $3 million. Training Day, 2001, $12 million. Dead Poets Society, 1989, $25,000.